We've defined our state and our action. Now we are ready to build a reducer to process that action and create new state. Though the store is the star of the NGRX show, it is the reducer that does all of the work. As actions are dispatched, it's the reducer that performs any required processing and returns a new representation of the state to the store. This is a key concept of NGRX. The store's state tree should be immutable, meaning its structure and values should never be changed once it's been created. Wait, what? If we aren't supposed to change the store's state, how do we process our actions? Let's walk through an example. We registered our products reducer in the product feature module when we initialized the store, so our products reducer represents the product's slice of state. Let's say our product slice of state includes the data for the currently selected product and the list of products for display in the product list. The user clicks on the display product code checkbox and the toggle product code action is dispatched. The reducer takes in that action and the reducer's associated slice of state, which in this example is our entire product slice. The reducer then creates new state by copying the existing state and applying changes to that copy based on the defined action. In this example, by adding show product code with a value of true. The reducer then replaces the product slice portion of the state tree with this new state, thereby creating new state. So technically we aren't modifying or mutating the state. Why go through all of this work for immutability? It makes state changes more explicit and predictable, which is important as the application gets larger or more complex. It keeps us from asking questions like, where the heck is this being changed? And all changes are defined by specific actions that can be tracked and traced. If you like this video, please like and subscribe.